Hello, project managers. Thank you for joining me today. I am Candice Porter, and today we are going to dive into Smartsheets workload tracking features. One of the biggest challenges that I hear quite often when I'm working with clients, it's very challenging to appropriately manage your human resources when there's a lot of cross-functional projects going on. These newer features in Smartsheet are going to help you do that. There are a few nuances with enabling it and getting it set up. And so we will walk through step-by-step step today. We wanna give you what you need as far as data and visibility so that you can better manage your resources, especially when they're working on multiple projects. This YouTube channel focuses on all things project management. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And I would greatly appreciate it if you like this video. I have to admit over the years, Smartsheets resource management functionality has gotten a little bit confusing because they used to use something called 10,000 feet. They then acquired 10,000 feet, and that is now an add-on module called resource management. What we're going to be talking about today focuses on workload tracking, which isn't quite as robust as the resource tracking, but it's absolutely better than not having the workload tracking functionality at all. Let's go ahead and take a look and I'm going to walk you through functionality of this to begin. It's important to note that you must be a licensed user in the legacy collaborator model or a member if you're utilizing the user subscription model. Sheet owners and admins can enable workload tracking. I'm going to show you how you can ensure that people have the correct access rights in the admin panel before we start getting hands-on. I'm going to be using some terms as we go through the video. The first thing that you'll hear me talk about is the workload heat map. The way that you access this is by clicking on the tile near the bottom that is called resource management. When we're looking at the workload heat map, however, you can see that there's some color coding associated with it. Red means that an individual resource is over allocated. Dark gray means that someone is fully allocated, so 100%. Medium gray means that someone is partially allocated between 1% and 99%. Light gray means that the resource is available or 0% allocated. Blue means that you're looking at the assignments related to the current project sheet. That is important because the current project sheet that you're working within, for example, this is project ABC, is going to be the only project plan that you can modify the resource assignments to. In other words, you can reassign some of the tasks within project ABC based on what you're seeing in the workload heat map or the workload schedule. And then if you need to make further adjustments to assignments within other project plans, you'll need to exit out of this project plan and go into the other project plan to make the modifications. There's also something called workload schedule. This has very similar color coding when you're working within the workload schedule. Although I wanna run through these very quickly with you. Red still means that a resource is over allocated. Medium gray means that assignments are related to other projects. You cannot modify the resource assignments for those other projects because you're not working within that plan. Light gray means that a resource is available to take on additional assignments. And blue means assignments related to the current project sheet. Before I show you how to activate the workload tracking functionality within a project plan, there are a couple important steps that need to be taken in the admin panel. If you don't have admin rights within Smartsheet, then you may need to request them because you do need to ensure that people that are going to be managing human resources have resource viewer set up. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. I am currently logged into Smartsheet and I am 
a system admin within Smartsheet. So when I come down to the lower left-hand corner where my account is and I click on that, you will see that I have access to the admin center. When I click on admin center, it's going to take me to a page where it shows me some key details regarding my plan. Once I am here, click on these three lines in the upper left-hand corner, and then I will select user management. Once I click on user management, it is going to pull up all of the users associated with my plan as a system admin. I want Amanda to be able to manage resources within Smartsheet, and she is not currently set up to do that. I'm going to click on this little pencil and it's going to pull up the general information for Amanda. What I need to look for is this resource viewer option. Again, you must be a licensed user. If I toggle off licensed user, this is going to be grayed out. And so I'm not going to be able to enable Amanda's resource viewer. I want to click resource viewer and then save. Anyone that is going to be managing workload tracking needs to have the resource viewer enabled. If you're getting hung up somewhere on the steps I'm going to show you next, this is where I'd start. I would make sure that the people are enabled as a resource viewer. I have now navigated to the workspace where I am sharing resources on three different projects. We're going to call them Project McDonald's, Project Pizza Hut, and Project Taco Bell. I'm going to start with Project McDonald's. Here I have a project plan. I'm currently working within Grid View. I've got it set up with all of my different levels of my work breakdown structure. So this is level one, my project level, divided into phases. So phase one is design. Phase two is bidding and award, and phase three is construction admin slash observation. I don't have any resources assigned right now. And that is on purpose because I want to show you what happens when you enable your workload management. I mentioned earlier that the resource management tile on the far right-hand side is going to be what we want to click in order to access our resource management or our workload management. When you first click on that, nothing is enabled for tracking workload. It does give you some pointers and informs you that you need to have a start date and end date and assigned resource, allocation percentage, duration, and predecessors set up in order to utilize the resource management functionality. I currently have all of those included here with the exception of the assigned resource and the allocation percentage. It is going to automatically add those two columns when I click on track workload. Once you click on it, it may take a few seconds or maybe even a minute for everything to enable. So just be patient with it. Once it is enabled, you will see that you get a notification. Your sheet is set up for workload tracking. I'm going to close that out because I want to show you that it has added these two columns here for assigned resource and allocation percentage. I'm going to add my name to every single one of these. Once I add it the first time, it's going to let me know that I can notify team members when a row gets assigned to them. I'm going to click not right now. And remember that we assign task at the lowest level of our work breakdown structure. I'm not going to be assigning any work for the project level or the phase level. And it's a summary of all of the tasks that roll up below it. So I'm only going to be assigning resources at the lowest level, which means I will have them assigned to all of the white tasks. Once I have all resources assigned, I'm going to click save. I know that I'm currently working on other projects and that I'm going to be assigned to Project McDonald's at 10%. And I'm going to click save. If you already have the assigned resource and the allocation percentage in your project plan, there's another way of doing it. You can enable workload tracking and switch from grid view to Gantt view. And once you are in Gantt view, 
You can click on your project settings here. It looks like a little gear and then click on resource management near the bottom resource management by smart sheet is what you're going to want to click on. It's going to ask you to align the name of the column that you have your resources assigned to, to the assigned resource column. So if you haven't named something else, just make sure that you have the actual name of your column aligned to the assigned resource column. And then you'll want to do the same for the allocation percentage column. If you have not worked with allocation percentage before, I want to explain the purpose of that. What that means is the time of the resource that is assigned to that particular task. For example, if we look at row four here, task two under phase one, this indicates that this task is going to take three working days and it's going to start on 813 and end on 815. That means that if I am assigned at 10% over those three days, and we're talking about eight hour working days, that would mean over those three days, there's a total of 24 working hours. If I'm only assigned at 10%, I expect to complete that task in 2.4 hours. Hopefully that's helpful. When you're assigning resources and the allocation percentage, this is something that you want to do with the people that are going to be working on the project. Because if you're doing it just as a project manager heads down, there's a chance that may not be accurate. Now that we have the assigned resource in, the allocation percentage, the start dates, end dates, predecessors, duration, and so forth, I'm going to go back and click on the resource management. This is going to pull up the workload heat map that we talked about earlier. You could see right off the bat that there's over allocation because there are some red stents that are showing up on this bar. If I want to dig a little bit deeper, I'm going to click on the expand. This is not only going to show Project McDonald's, it's also going to show the other projects that I'm assigned to. When the workload schedule opens, it looks a little bit messy because everything's stacked on top of each other. You can adjust the view by sliding this bar to the left or the right. If I slide it to the left, it condenses. If I slide it to the right, it expands. I am going to zone in on the week of August 5th through 11th because that is the first period that I see that I'm over allocated. I went through the color coding of what the different colors mean on the workload schedule. The assignments that are showing up in blue relate to this particular project. That's really an important aspect because these are the ones that I'm going to be able to click into and I'm going to be able to look at the task and I can actually reassign it if I'd like. The ones that are showing up in gray won't let me double click on it. The over allocation for the week of August 5th through 11th doesn't relate to this particular project. It relates to Project Pizza Hut and Project Taco Bell. So I'm going to need to go into those projects to address that over allocation. If I make the adjustments in those project schedules, there's a chance that it could also take care of some of the over allocation for the week of August 12th through 18th. I'm also over allocated by 35%, 45%, 55%, and so forth during that week. Before I make any adjustments, I am going to choose to go into Project Pizza Hut and take a look at that because it's showing that I'm currently assigned at 100% during that time period. All that I need to do is click the back button and it will take me back to my project plan. I can close out of the workload heat map. Then I'm going to click the back button and I am now back in the workspace. And as I mentioned, I want to go into Project Pizza Hut. This already has the workload tracking functionality enabled. And again, it's got all of the appropriate columns and I'm going to click on resource management again. It's going to show me my heat map, I'm going to expand this. And this is where we were looking at August five through 11. 
Where I'm 25% over allocated, I am assigned at 100% to Project Pizza Hut. When I'm looking at the other resources that are assigned to this particular project, we have Amanda that is also assigned to it. And she's actually available at 100% during that time period where I'm over allocated. What are Amanda's skill sets? And would she be able to take on the work that I am assigned right here from August 6th to August 15th? I'm going to click into that task. And if I want to reassign it, it's going to give me some options regarding other people that are currently assigned on this project, or if there's someone else that I want to pull into this project that's not currently working on it, I can go ahead and search by name. Let's say I have done the legwork. I know Amanda's available. I know that she has the skill set to take on task one, and she believes that she could do it in the same number of days or duration that were originally assigned to me. Once I've confirmed that, I can go ahead and reassign it to Amanda. So I'm going to click reassign here, voila, that Amanda is now working on task one at 100% during those dates, August 6th through August 15th. And I am no longer over allocated that week or the following week. Again, we're only going to be able to reassign tasks to the project that we are currently working within. And those are the tasks that are showing up in blue. So as I get a little bit further along, you could see I'm also over allocated the week of September two through eight. Within Project Pizza Hut, I'm assigned at 30% for those five working days. However, if I dig into task four, it really does seem that that's a task that requires my specific skill set. So I'm not going to be able to reassign that to anyone. That tells me that I need to go into Project Taco Bell and investigate and determine if I can reduce the percentage on the work associated with Project McDonald's during that same time. This is going to give us a really great tool, the workload schedule, because we're really quickly going to be able to see who is over allocated during which dates. Are there other resources that we could shift some of that work to? The key, however, is that you're going to need to be very clear on all of the projects that each of the resources are working on. What is their availability for project work? If someone only has 50% of their time each week that can be set aside, so let's say that's 20 hours if you typically work a 40-hour work week then we need to make sure that we're communicating with them and their managers to understand that so that we're not piling project work on top of their operational work to where they're over allocated in that way. I hope this video has been helpful to highlight Smartsheet's workload management functionality. This is not something that you will do just one time and you don't look at it again. It's something that you should be continuously working with and also collaborating with the other project managers that you're sharing resources with. In addition to that, I highly recommend that you're talking to each of the individuals working on your projects and their managers if they don't report to you to understand their availability for project work. How many hours a week do they have available? And that's also going to help with the assignments as you're reassigning tasks, or increasing the duration of task so that if someone has eight hours of work, it's stretched over maybe 10 working days versus condensed to two working days. That will make sure that you have realistic expectations of when the work is going to be done and the people that have successor or follow on task, they have a pretty good understanding of when they're going to be required for that project work. I am again, Candace Porter. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. And we have quite a few other project management related videos out there. And I hope that you enjoy.